Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. This show is for the ladies. As a woman with a physical and obvious disability, a lot of attention has been given to my disability and how that affects my health. But as a woman, I know there are lady parts that also need attention. Today, we're going to talk about women's health. And we have a guest, Angela Carr who is a woman with a disability herself and has dealt with various health issues. Thanks, Angela, for joining us. Hi, thank you. Can you tell me a bit of your professional experience when it comes to women's health? Yes, so I've been working in the mental health field for the past 15 years. And more recently, I've been working in a women's prison. And you know, there's a huge connection between our mental health and our physical health, right? How our mental health affects our physical health and how our physical health affects our mental health. I've worked with women who have been pregnant, who have had miscarriages, who have been um, going through menopause, different stages of their lives. And so I really got interested in working with women and doing sexual health education and working specifically on women's health. And I mentioned that you also have a disability. Do you mind telling and sharing with us what your disability is? Yes, I have spina bifida. It causes mobility issues as well as bladder and bowel issues for me. Um, As a woman with a disability, what challenges have you had to um, deal with either from your past or up to the present? So... When I first became sexually active, um, a few things, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about spina bifida at the time, and I didn't know how it would affect me sexually, and I didn't know any other people that had spina bifida. So I, like I said, I had bladder and bowel issues, and, you know, that created problems when I became sexually active. I realized that I couldn't be spontaneous when it came to sex. Right. I have to, you know, plan things out. I have to go to the bathroom before and after and, you know, put down towels and things like that. Um, And I had questions that I had to go to the doctor about. And also, um, I needed to also talk to my doctors because I didn't want to have children. And I wanted to get my tubes tied. I wanted to get tubal ligation. And they denied me, you know, when I was in my 20s because they said I was too young. And then, um, you know, I was too young and I also didn't have any other children. So I was denied. And then as I got older, they continued to say no because um, I was overweight and also they were worried that I might have respiratory problems. So, um, you know, I've actually been on birth control for the past 20 years, which I've been concerned about because um, the doctors that I was working with wouldn't, you know, um, perform the tubal, tubal ligation. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as I'm getting older, I'm having other mm-hmm. issues. Um, I have a prolapsed uterus. So the uterus is actually coming out of the vagina. Um, and that's something that I didn't know about. As a woman with spina bifida, I'm not able to urinate on my own. I have to self calf And so the, um, the muscles aren't as strong and, um, you know, over time that creates the, um, to with the, the prolapse uterus. So, you know, I didn't know when I was younger, you know, to, that there were exercises I could do for pelvic floor muscles. Um, and that's something I wish I had known, you know, when I was younger about. So I'm planning actually in July to have a hysterectomy. So for all of you younger people, Kegels are important <laughs> for long-term health care. Yes. I didn't know that either. Um, and I don't know why we don't talk about it. I feel like we should talk about these things because, um, you know, advice you would give to your younger self, uh, such as doing Kegels. Is there any other advice you would give to younger women um, in regards to their health? Um, there, there's kegel exercises. There's also exerciser balls that are a little bit bigger um, that you can use if um, 
you know, you can use without doing Kegel exercises necessarily, but if you walk around and you do your shop, you know, you insert them, you go and you do your shopping or you do your household chores. Um, so, you know, there are different things that you can do too, besides Kegel muscles. Um, and I think also I would tell my younger self to advocate more for myself and speak up for what I needed. And when one doctor said no, go to a different doctor. Um, you know, that's definitely something I, I would have told my younger self. So um, going back to the fertility issue, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think as women with disabilities, sometimes we know our body mo better than doctors. They think of it as, oh, you're too young. You don't know what kind of decision you're making at this point in your life. But like you, you were very sure. I don't want children. I don't know how it's going to affect my body. Um, and or you did know how it would affect your body and that's not something you wanted to put yourself through. Um, is there something that may have been able to be said to further that discussion, to have doctors see it your way or consider something different than the traditional way of thinking regarding infertility? I think, you know, looking back on it, hindsight is twenty twenty. I could have maybe had the OBGYN um, connect with my spina bifida doctors. I have a, a team of doctors at a spina bifida clinic and they could have connected because for me, you know, it's a personal decision, but for me, I was concerned about being pregnant and going through labor, having spina bifida. And I had said, even from a young age, if I do decide to have children, I'm going to adopt. Um, you know, so I think that one, going to a different doctor and two, having my doctors work together as a team and mm -hmm. collaborate would have been important. That's good advice. Um, what about mammograms? Our, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to make sure all of our parts are taken care of. Um, I know I, I hit 40 a few years ago and I get that letter in the mail saying it's time for your mammogram. Congratulations, you hit Club 40. <laughs> um, uh, and so it's like an initiation process and you go in not knowing. I think most women go in not knowing, except hearing horror stories. Oh, it's so painful. And, but you don't really understand why it's painful. And, and you know, there's this machine. And um, so going in as a wheelchair user, um, and it's not like I came in with anybody. I just went in. So having a nurse have to help me you know, put my girls up there. <laughs> That's, you know, it, it's there. You know, I wish I was prepped a little bit more about um, how mammograms go and what I can ask for and what, what I should be prepared to ask for. Do you have any thoughts on, on that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that you can call the doctor's office ahead of time, um, get some information about what to expect and, you know, don't just talk to the receptionist that answers. Ask to either speak to the doctor or speak with one of the nurses and explain to them what your disability is, what your concerns are, maybe about falling or um, using a wheelchair and, and using the, the machine that they have and how they can assist you. Um, definitely, you want to kind of go in with having a plan. And when you get there, you may have to remind them, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but it, you know, it's really important because I think that as women with disabilities, we tend to focus, you know, we have so many appointments that we have for our specific disability, right? I know for me, I have a team of doctors that I have to see and, and we get so wrapped up in that that we don't think about these other health issues. You know, we don't think about getting um, yearly gynecology exams. We don't think about mammograms. Um, and those are all really important because um, different types of cancers, you know, if they're uh, found early, they're detected early, they can be treated early. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really very important. What questions can we ask doctor, our, doctor offices when we call and, and ask them, you know, regarding accommodations and such? Definitely can ask about accessibility, if their building is accessible. Also, if they have a table um, or a bed that you, you can sit on that's lower. Um, I had an experience myself where I went to a gynecology office and 
you know, I, I was wearing nothing but the little paper gown that they give you and I fell off the, the table. And yeah, so it was really scary and it was embarrassing and no one was in the room with me at the time. So I just got right back up on the table and I didn't tell anyone. And so I ended up later with a sprained ankle because of it. So ever since I've made sure, you know, I go to a doctor's office that they have um, a lower table and I make sure to get my appointment and get, you know, in that room with that lower table. Are there certain laws that protect our rights in terms of what doctors need to provide related to accommodations so we can get the proper checkups? Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, Americans with Disabilities Act and, um, you know, not all services are accessible. I think that that's something we need to work on is getting more doctor's offices to be accessible and to, you know, reach out to women with disabilities. Um, but, you know, I think something that has helped me is reaching out to my spina bifida clinic. Um, when I was interested in getting to a ligation and even when I was struggling about getting a hysterectomy, they um, referred me to a doctor's office that worked with people you know, an OBGYN that worked with people with disabilities. So, you know, I think that you can get referrals that way as well. Um, are there any other areas that you feel are important to address for women's health, especially women with disabilities? We have a disability, but that doesn't mean that we couldn't develop other types of health problems in the future. And we want to be as proactive as we can be with our health you know, to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. And I think, especially when it comes to um, women's health, if I had um, a problem with my foot, if I had a pain in my foot, I would call an orthopedic doctor. I wouldn't have an issue with that. But if I had any vaginal pain during sex, let's say, um, I might not be as willing to call a doctor. I might think, um, you know, I'm like embarrassed about calling a doctor. So it's really important that we take care of ourselves and, you know, pick up the phone when we need to. You know, doctors have heard everything. And, you know, if you're not sure what type of doctor to go to, call your primary doctor. Um, but make sure that you're taking care of yourself. How could we talk with our doctors more openly about, like, I'm just a person and I have sex and this is what I do. And, you know, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, talking with the doctor about it, um, bringing it up if they don't is important. Um, you know, and if they don't listen to you and address those concerns for you, going and finding another doctor that will. Um, you know, I think that it's, a lot of times they don't ask this question. And um, you know, I think we have to really advocate for ourselves. I've had to advocate for myself, you know, and that's how I got involved with doing sexual health education with women with disabilities, because I think that we need to really learn how to advocate for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate um, you saying that because I do think it's important for um, us as ladies to find our voice, to use that voice, exercise that, because at the end of the day, it's our, it, we have to live with our health, whether it be um, negative or, and or positive. So um, go out there, ladies, and get your checkups. And I think being, um, being diligent of, about doing it on a regular basis. Um, and sometimes it can be embarrassing, but like you said, most doctors have heard it all. <laughs> um, and that's somebody we mm -hmm. should be very comfortable in um, communicating with. Um, Angela, I want to thank you so much for coming on again. I know you've done a show with us in the past and you're always a plethora of information. So thank you for um, being with us again. I'm sure we'll have you on future shows. <laughs> but um, I feel like we can learn from each other. Uh, you know, if you're watching this, I'd love to encourage you to get involved in the conversation. What experiences have you had with doctors? What has worked with you? What hasn't worked with you? Have you been afraid to um, get your 
lady parts checked because you were embarrassed um, and that hasn't been discussed with you because of your disability? And how did you, how do you handle that? Or is there something that we can help you with? If you could share with us, don't forget to subscribe and share. And if you'd like to see more information from One Leg Up Productions, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you and be blessed.